Hello. Um, I should just point out that James Cridland, who invited me here today, has just spent the last 10 minutes slagging off my slogan called The Better Music Mix, um, which I shouldn't really admit to inventing. I probably didn't, but um, why am I here? Well, when I was asked to do a presentation by said um, Matt and James, I asked them who the audience was. They were, very, they were very good. They said that everyone in this room, I should overestimate your intelligence and your skill set. So um, you should feel pretty good about that. Um, and there are, I understand, lots of different... How many presenters are in the room? How many? Don't be scared, put your hands up. If you were salespeople, you'd have them up there and I'd be able to see you, everything. Uh, how many uh, producers in the room? How many non-radio people in the room? All radio people. Okay, thank you. Um, I called a few people before doing this presentation, um, ex-colleagues of GWR, GCAP, who've gone on to do great things at the BBC, Global, Bauer, and Absolute, and the, and the UKDs of the industry. And what surprised me was the level of interest in the Australian radio market. Um, I spent 15 years living here and being told how crap it was, so I was surprised to see that there were some people interested in it. Um, and... Uh, um, a friend of mine who's uh, now working at BBC in Manchester said, look, you know, when I, when I meet people, um, I ask them, who do you listen to? And they say, well, Chris Moyles and Zane Lowe and, and, uh, and the Hamish and Andy podcast. So what are the differences between the UK and Australia? Well, I've got five observations to make for you today. And the first and most important observation is that there are more similarities than there are differences. Two famous yeast extracts. Did you ever think you'd come to a radio conference and talk about Vegemite? Well, similarities include yellow lids, red labels, both black, they're both yeast extract, but they taste very different. So for radio in the UK versus Australia, the similarities include they're both in English, some would argue that point. Both are on AM, FM, DAB, they've got apps coming out of their ears. Both use music, personality, radio, news content, uh, both have similar production values. Uh, but they both sound quite different. So why is that? Well, my observations are geography, the size of the countries, the market share of commercial versus the public service broadcasters and their history, cultural acceptances, again, some people would argue with the word culture, and the attitudes of talents. Let's look at geography. Uh, anyone here from the Republic of Ireland? No? Okay, I'm safe. As you can tell by that map, the Republic of Ireland is in here and it shouldn't be. The size of the country, 62 million people live in the UK, that's the red bit, if you include Ireland, that's another three or so million. 22 million people live in Australia and 312 live in the US. And according to the Encyclopedia of Google, um, you can fit the UK anywhere between 15 and 31 times. As I said, the Encyclopedia of Google, you can choose which figure works for you. I think it's somewhere closer to 15 and 31. So how does geography impact on the differences? Well, social impact is probably one of the biggest ones. It takes five hours to fly from Sydney to Perth. Perth is actually closer to Singapore than Sydney. Uh, big gaps between towns and cities. There's lots of cows and sheep. The cost of running standalone radio stations is a result of that. The impact on content. So localism in Australia uh, has uh, more importance. That's changing as the world globalises, but the sheer size of the gaps between the communities means localism still plays a pretty big role. The implications for making money. More local businesses means more local money, uh, but smaller population sizes has a, has a counter impact on that. A singular observation is that local still counts for more in the regional markets in Australia, and hence the differences in content, but the emergence of the Googles of the world and their local listings uh, mean a danger for revenues. But that's another presentation for the suits uh, in Manchester. So let's take a look. Uh, I, forgive the, um, the, the, the volume of numbers here. Um, market share of the commercial radio versus um, public service broadcasters. History has much to do with how the two markets have evolved. In Australia, commercial ra radio started earlier and grew faster than its public service broadcaster counterpart. But in the UK, as you very well know, the BBC came first and took uh, a lot of the space on the radio bands. The UK here in the UK is 25 to 30 years old, and my old radio station in Devonport, Tasmania, has just turned 80. And yes, there is a really sad photo of me in there. Here in the UK, the BBC's market share is 55 versus 44. There is a missing 1% for those uh, analysts amongst you. I understand that's in the other bucket. 
There's community radio in both, but there seems like a lot more community radio in Australia if you start looking at the numbers. The big difference is where you see the influence in Australia of the ABC and SBS on the market. The split between commercial radio and public service in Australia, 65% goes to commercial uh, and ABC and SBS have 35%. Australia's population is 22 million, as I said, 756 stations versus 62 million people in the UK with circa 508 stations, and that's not counting the pirates. That creates a very competitive spirit in order to get noticed. Uh, is that a difference in the two markets? And more on that in a moment. This is, um, I suppose, Australia's equivalent to Chris Moyles, if you like. My fourth observation is cultural acceptances, or in plain English, what you can get away with on the air. It's always understood that ra by radio bosses here that Ofcom is, is much stricter than Australia, and from my observation, that's not true. What is different is what's acceptable on the air, some of it regulated, some of it not. Uh, it's somewhat looser, and for example, you can hear swear words on the air that certainly wouldn't be acceptable here. And the big shows will push harder to come up with a new big idea to grab audience attention. Mix the two together and you get things like this. Yeah. Okay, what's your next question, Mum? Okay, have you had sex? I've already told you the story of this. And don't look at me and smile because it's not funny. Oh, okay. Um, I got raped when I was 12 years old. Right. And is that the uh, is that the only experience you've had? I only found out about that um, a couple of months ago. Yes, I knew about and that. And yet you still ask me the question. I was. The I think question was, have you had sex other than that? I'm really sorry. We didn't actually know that that was the case, and I think we might actually bought this this segment. I, I had no idea that you've been through that, so I'm really sorry. And we'll just let you off the hook, I think. I think it's best not to continue. Are you all right? It's okay. You just take a breather. It's fine. As a result of that, um, there were severe sanctions for the radio station, the radio company, and they now have a lawyer, literally sits inside a studio next to the studio with the hands on the 30-second delay button. The attitude of talent is uh, also what makes a big difference. It's my fourth observation, and that's you in the room. People that work on the air and off the air, here or in Australia or anywhere. Is there a difference between the attitudes of talent here and in Australia or in any other country in Europe? Once again, I think there are many, many more similarities. Instinctively, I'd say if you have more radio stations chasing audiences can create a more competitive attitude. Instinctively. Could you say that they are more competitive here than there? Personally, from experience of working in both markets over the years, as was mentioned in an earlier presentation, uh, I do think that may have been the case in the past, but not today. Let's take a look at uh, Hamish and Andy. Hello there. Hi. In the interest of keeping their meetings absolutely secret, Hamish and Andy hold any important business conversations entirely underwater. God, I'm late. Sorry I'm late. That's okay. Okay, first agenda point. I'll be happy with Amy keeping the website free for everyone. Well, they're giving up the 15% off for safe drivers, so yeah. Yeah, safe driver rewards. Okay, agenda point two. Are we happy keeping the website on the internet? That's the best place for it, I reckon. Yeah. Okay, anything else you'd like to add? I do have a story about a windmill. I am running out of breath. Well, I really wanted to tell it. Sorry I'm late, guys. What did I miss? I was going to tell a story about a windmill. I'd like to hear that. Now I'm running out of breath, so... Meeting adjourned. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Good meeting. Good meeting. Good meeting. <laughs> Here's another look at some talent. Kyle and Jackie O again. Uh, okay. This is the Kyle and Jackie O show's prep area. Uh, yes, it's a conference room, but they record everything off the air that could be potentially used on the air. Note what the players are doing in this video. While Kyle didn't, I don't think, know what was going to happen, as soon as he started filming, and note the other people that are filming as well, not just the guy in the corner whose job it is to film. Note the cuts on the video, and as I said, how many other people were filming. Yeah, well, that's, that's a good question, because I reckon, like, just thinking, I was going the second way, you just said it then. But... Oh, oh, my God! What was that? What was that? What was that? What was that? What was that?
I'm practicing out there. You ran out there? I thought, what's he doing on the floor? There's no doubt that the big guys in the industry, BBC, Bauer, Global, have exactly the same competitive spirit as the big guys in Australia, and they go hard to win the star status. As you can see, it's the same in both countries. Now, what is the difference uh, between uh, Australia and the UK is, an, is a second public service broadcaster in radio called SBS. So what's a dirty old commercial radio guy like me doing in a public service broadcaster that's got a multicultural background? Quote and unquote was said to me when I came back here. Well, SBS is Australia's uh, second public service broadcaster. It's like Channel 4. Um, but with a radio network, I heard that earlier on today as well. Two AM and FM national radio networks, a bit like the BBC World Service, but targeting a domestic audience whose first language may be something other than English, or is something other than English. At SBS, I was part of the executive team um, setting strategy for SBS television channels, national radio channels, a big online presence, mobile and social. But my passion for the people in this audience um, was uh, for the radio opportunities. Uh, the division was called ALC, Audio and Language Content, uh, and the audience brand was SBS Radio, a bit like BBC Audience and Music, but we all know Radio 1 and 2. It's a powerful message to label a team around the content rather than the platform. My day job was to lead a team of 200 journalists working, and producers working across radio, television, online, social and mobile platforms, uh, but particularly focus on, focusing on uh, news and current affairs and music stations as we went into digital across those different devices. At the time, SBS Radio was seen as out of step with the needs of its audience. Its workforce would be, workforce would be doing the same thing for about 30 years and <coughs> SBS needed to change as, um, as TV people. They really didn't know how to go about that. So beyond a bit of interesting anorak information, what does that mean for you here in the audience? And in my experience, both here in uh, the UK, Australia, Africa and Europe, where I've also worked, whether it's a big station or a small station, whether you're doing a podcast or a big radio show, as talent, you need to understand where you fit in to make the biggest difference. This is the second upside down triangle for the day. Any critical function, uh, a critical function for any leader is to interpret the organisational strategy and for the to the individual so they know where they fit, from the big picture to day-to-day -day actions. Let me give you the SBS example. Why does Australia need SBS? Well, to help develop Australia's social policy for a successful multicultural society. Half of Australians have a parent or themselves were born overseas, starting from the top of the triangle, by the way. So what's its purpose? SBS's purpose is to create media content that contributes to an inclusive society. Stepping one down. The goal is to grow the audience and deepen engagement. That was the three-year uh, goal that we set for ourselves. And a divisional plan in the division that I looked after was that we shifted from overseas news and information to local Australian news and information and to target younger audiences. And the team, that would be an executive producer in the program, with, and there were, six, were about 60 programs on that network, that we produced more Australian content. And you... What does each person in the show do? When you've been producing one set of content for many, many years, what do you do uh, to change in the future? Story topics about Australian content, how do you get that onto mobile? How do you get that onto better production? All of the things that have been spoken about already this morning. The message needs telling every day and that talent must get feedback against those goals. So have a think about the tasks and jobs that you have tomorrow. Do you know how they contribute to your team or are you just going in doing the same thing as you did yesterday? And do you know how that fits into the bigger picture? It might sound like a suits job, but I can assure you it's something that you should be aware of if you want to achieve success, whatever that means to you, faster and enjoy your career more. Take it upon yourself to understand how you contribute and take it upon yourself to get feedback from your work. Make sure you get that feedback against the goals that have been set rather than somebody else's opinion. So to recap, Australia versus the UK. 
Many more similarities and differences. Geography plays a big role. The market share of commercial versus public service broadcasters and their roles in remit plays a big role. Cultural acceptances and the attitudes of talent, and that means you. The only other significant difference is it's about 12,000 miles away. Thank you very much. I can't believe that we've been here for about two and a half, three hours, and we've talked about 12 or 13 completely distinct things. The format is great, and uh, I'm just really pleased with it. It hammers through loads of different things. You can, you can barely keep up. It's a bit relentless, but in a good way. It's been a great day. Um, lots of good people to talk to, lots of good people to listen to, and learn lots of good things. Next.